There is very little more glorious than the beauty of a Northland winter. For many around the legendary Northwoods town of Ely, Minnesota, there's no better way to experience this beauty than behind a working team of dogs. Come along as we embrace the old ways and trek into the frozen backcountry of Northeast Minnesota in search of multi-species trout and a much deeper appreciation of winter's majesty in our Northland outdoors. camp when I was in college, so I came up to do a winter camping program and it, it included uh, dog sledding and I just took to it. I mean, running these dogs is just, it's just addictive. I mean, you just can't help but just fall in love with the dogs, the enthusiasm, the traveling through the woods with them, the working with animals to try to accomplish a goal is just, um, you know, it's just a great way to bond with the animals and um, we just have a blast traveling through the woods. in the pine forest near the tiny northeast Minnesota town of Isabella is the home base of white wilderness sled dog adventures. The chorus of excited dogs is music to the ears of owner-operator Peter McClellan. We have a hundred dogs here. We know every dog's name. We know their history. We know their personalities. Some of them we've raised from puppies. Some of them we've um, gotten from racing kennels where they can't quite make the racing cuts. They come here and they, they pull tours for us. These dogs are Alaskan Huskies. They are, they go back to the village dogs of Alaska. They're not a purebred breed like the Siberian Huskies, so they aren't going to look alike. They're going to look very different. All we care about is how well they perform their job. We don't care if their ears are upright or bent or eyes are blue or brown. We just care about their their, um, how fit they are to do their job. They have to like what they're doing. That's the most important. You cannot make a dog do this. They have to want to do it. And if they don't want to do it, then they need to go to a pet home. I'm going to be joined on the trail today by White Wilderness Guide Paige May and Ely Area Fishing Guide Ben Putnam. But before we go, Ben and I need a little instruction. I'm gonna give you a little tutorial on how to drive a dog sled, how to make everything fun and safe for you when you're out there. Now the most important thing I'm gonna show you is um, back here there are two brakes. There's a little chunk of snowmobile track brake and you can think of that as the slowdown brake. You can use it with just a heel or you can use it with your whole foot. The second brake back here, this larger bar brake, this is the stopping and staying stop brake. If your sled is not tied off and you are not moving, you are on this brake. Every year someone stops the dogs with the big brake and then they pop off and they just lost their dog team. Don't do that. How often do people fall off the sled? All the time. It's part of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about winter travel is you got this nice snow bank to land in. Should we learn how to hook up some dogs? Let's hook up some dogs, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is Garmin. Garmin was the, one of my old Bear Grease leaders. He's getting up there. He's 11 years old now. Definitely a been there, done that uh, kind of dog. So we're gonna take our dog. We're gonna straddle him. You're gonna hold him in between the two uh, ribs and the hips. We got all this is gonna go on his back. Right up over his head. You wanna bring this collar and scruff of the neck forward. These straps come down and each leg comes up and over and up and over. 
And there we have our dog harness. So these long black ones on the gang line with the clip on it, that's the tug line. It clips onto that colored loop called the tug loop. And that's what they tug to pull your sled. All right, we got the dogs harnessed up. I've got my authentic beaver mitts. Do I look like uh, um, an, an official dog musher here? We got the, the sled dog, the sled is loaded up. The dogs are hooked up. It's time to go trout fishing. Here we go. The adventure of a lifetime is underway. And as it is every time we head into the wilderness, we have no idea what might lie around the next bend. We'll find out when Northland Outdoors returns. In the backwoods of Northeast Minnesota, the Northland Outdoors team is in search of midwinter trout through the ice. But what makes this ice fishing adventure special is how we're getting to the fish. The lead dog is the dog in front of the sled that is taking the commands from the musher. They're not the mythical dominant dog. They're not in charge of the other dogs. They are there because of their willingness to go, their ability to be, be trained very well, to find detail. So they're the most important dog on the team. They are your dog team. Then behind them is what we call the point or swing dogs. And in a larger team, they just help to guide the whole, the whole team around corners and such. That's also a position we'll put potential lead dogs to kind of start observing how to be a lead dog. In front of the sled, we have what we call wheel dogs, and their job is just to provide a lot of power. In the old days, they would have helped the freight sleds turn around sharp corners by pulling the sled out to the outside of the corner. If a larger team is run, in between the point wheel dogs will be team dogs, and that just continues no matter how many pairs you have, they're just team dogs. In America, you know, contrary to a lot of popular belief, there were no horses here until Europeans brought them over. They just had dogs. <clears throat> and of course, we think of the Inuit in the high Arctic running sled dog teams. Well, of course they did, and they were very prominent up there, but even as far south as southern U.S., they had dogs pulling travois, just wooden contraptions through the, through, across the, the land. They had no horses, they used these dogs. They're used all over the Americas. And uh, mainly in the north here is where they had sleds. So they, in the winter time, they were critical to being able to survive. I mean, it's highly unlikely in the high Arctic that the humans could have survived without the dogs to get them around. All right, we just got off the, uh, the dog sled. And I gotta tell you, I can't wait to get back on. That was a lot of fun. We had about an hour ride through the woods. We've reached the lake that we're gonna fish. So uh, we're gonna pop a couple holes, see if we can't catch a couple trout. And uh, e even if we don't, this has, been a, this has been a blast so far. And we're gonna, we're gonna get back on uh, the sled and ride the dogs through the, through the woods a little bit more today. But first, we're gonna go try to catch some fish. The deep, crystal clear lakes in and around the Boundary Waters Canoe Area of Northeast Minnesota are ideal habitat for many trout species, including lake trout, rainbow trout, brook trout, and a rare lake trout brook trout hybrid known as a splake. Here at our first stop, brookies are the primary target. We're in 15 feet of water, and um, we got rocks on the bottom down there, and these stream trout are cruisers. They'll kind of cruise around the lake. So while you want to kind of try to find your, your right depth, um, 
I've always found that I just kind of set up in that depth and let the fish come to me. Um, sometimes it's good to move around a little bit and uh, try to find active fish, but in my experience anyway, these fish stay pretty active and are kind of cruising around the lake all the time. And I got another one marked right now. Got him. There we go. Fish on. All right. There we go. That's what we're after. Not a huge fish, but but they're, <laughs> but they're very active. They're fun to catch, and that right there is why we try to go after these fish, because they like to put up a fight. Did that one come off the bottom for you? Uh, he was probably in about eight or nine feet of water. Look at the color on this one. That's yeah. a, that's a that red fish. under stripe, too. That's pretty fish. So I was jigging in uh, probably around 10, we're in 15 feet of water. I was jigging around that 10 foot mark and I was just starting to bring it up and I looked and I couldn't tell if I had interference or, I mean, he just appeared on the graph. So I just slowly, I'm like, that might be a fish. So I just slowly kept bringing it right up and he, he just hammered it. There you go. Our dog sled ice fishing adventure is off to a great start, but I've got my sights set on pulling off a four species Minnesota trout grand slam. Oh, now he's a little angry. He's close. Welcome back to Northland Outdoors. I'm Brett Amundsen. With today's transportation catching a much needed siesta, Ely area fishing guide Ben Putnam and I continue our hunt for hungry northern Minnesota brook trout. Most likely, uh, these fish are most likely going to be eating bugs. In fact, if we open them up, which isn't a bad idea, we'll be able to tell exactly what they've been eating. Um, but it's most likely going to be there are these little uh, little fly larvae that hatch overnight. Oh, there's another fish. Three, two, one. There we go. You got him? Yep. Fish on. All right, Ben. About time. I know, right? So I was working that spoon and uh, had this fish and two others chasing it for what, 10 or 15 minutes, had to have been. And uh, you know, I, I was fed up, so I decided to get my other rod ready. I quickly reeled it up, dropped this down, and he smacked it immediately. And now I just got rid of it. Yeah, it's just a, one of those new VMC jigs with a plastic on it. So it just gave him a little different presentation? Yeah, and that's what he wanted, so he wanted it bad. With the brook trout conquered, it was time to move on to another species. But in this part of the world, another pristine trout lake is just a short dog sled ride away. Once back on the ice, it only takes a little searching before species number two makes an appearance. How's he fighting? Oh, now he's a little angry, he's close. All right, take it easy, he's right under the ice. Hold him there until he comes up. There we go. Oh, all right. rainbow. <laughs> Look at that rainbow. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's right, we're eating him anyways. All right. You can see that colors on these fish are just unbelievable. You just don't see colors on fish like you do on, rain on rainbow trout. That's a beautiful fish. Yeah, it is. We're targeting all of these trout with similar presentations. Small jigs and jigging spoons tipped with a waxworm or Euro larvae on very light line work fairly aggressively throughout the water column. Trout will cruise all depth levels in search of prey, so good electronics are key. And once you've got a handful on the ice, a shelter with a camp stove and a little know-how can turn a successful day on the water into a memorable on-ice meal. There we go. Yeah, this one's ready. Well, Ben, this smells delicious. Sure does. Let's dig in. Mm. Oh like yeah, it. that's good. And you can definitely taste the fruit. It's a nice touch, I like that. Well, yeah, that's good. The shack dinner 
courtesy of Ben Putnam Ely Ice Guides. Fresh trout. You have a name for this meal? This is your secret recipe. Mm -hmm. I call it trout. <laughs> Between the trout, the dogs, and the dinner, this has already been an incredible adventure. But we still got two trout species to catch, and we plan to do it when Northland Outdoors returns. In the cold, pre-dawn darkness of another northern Minnesota winter day, Ben Putnam of Ely Ice Guides and I are returning to the backcountry to continue our hunt for trout. We've given the sled dogs a day off and are faced with a serious weather change with frigid sub-zero temps and heavy snow in the forecast. Nothing new for a full-time guide like Ben. When it's fishing, oh, there's, there's nothing like waking up in the morning and just being excited to get out. You know, you know that you're going to be putting yourself in front of the prime window and uh, you don't know what you're going to get that day. You know, you could get one of those 30 inch stream trout in the lake. You could, you know, get a whole ton of fish. You might get skunked. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, so it's exciting. The whole drive to the lake, you know, it's like, oh, I wonder where I'm going to punch my holes today. You know, I wonder where the fish are going to be. Maybe they're going to be out in 15 right on the slant, or maybe we'll need to move outside the weed line. So, you know, you're just constantly excited and constantly motivated to, uh, you know, to just get out there on the ice, find out where those fish are, and then start catching them. We're targeting the final two trout in our four species Grand Slam this morning, the lake trout and the Laker Brookie hybrid known as a splake. This particular spot, a steep rocky break into deep water, is ideal for Lakers. So Brett, what I've been doing most of lately is dropping down and hitting the bottom, stirring it up, then reeling up pretty quick about 10 feet off and jigging there and just keep going back to the bottom and coming back up. At a minimum, I like a 10 pound test line. The rods I'm using are specifically designed for lake trout. They're a, you know, they're a heavier action rod and uh, they've got you know, they're a little bit longer than your average ice fishing rod. These are 42 inches. Oh, there's a, there's a fish. Oh yeah. Not very big. I'll get your transducer out of there for you. Okay. I see him. There we go. Try not to get these too high off the ground. They're so hard to hold. So this has been our average size lately. I shouldn't say our, this has been my average size lately. This, I mean, this year is still young, but there are a lot of these fish in the lake right now. It's a very strong year class. Expect to see a lot of these here. Uh, you will see a lot of bigger fish too. So we're hoping to find some of those today. Uh, but in the meantime, catching lake trout's catching lake trout. So. So that puts three of our four trout species under the belt, with only the elusive splake left on the list. So, with the snow picking up and temps dropping, Ben leads us to yet another pristine lake. This lake is, it's uh, stocked about three to two over the rainbow. So there's splake and rainbow in here. The splake will grow faster in this lake too. So our average size should be bigger than the rainbows. Here he comes. Oh, that's a big fish. Yes! Woo! Started coming up easy now, it's giving some fight. Here he comes. Oh, it's coming up tail first. <laughs> There we go. There we go. It's a splake. All right. There we go. Yeah. That's the new VMC fly jig. Hey, look at that. Yeah. It's got a little tungsten ball on the end. Very nice. So we got our splake. Let's take a look at this guy. Now we can see that dorsal fin. We'll compare this to that brook trout. Okay. You know, it's 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 a lot. It's it's different. And then uh, I mean, as you can see, it looks a lot like a lake, lake trout. trout. 
Yeah. It looks a ton like a lake trout. You'll see a little blue sheen in the back. Sure. And I believe that's it gets that from the brook trout. And of course, these, these spots are yellow. That can be forage and everything else. Man, this is a beautiful fish. Yeah, it is. We've got, uh, we've got a laker, we got uh, rainbows, we got brookies, and now we got splake. So, uh, Ben, nice job, thank you very much. What are we doing here? Let's do that again. Uh, uh, Let's, <laughs> how about, oh, yeah, there we go. There, <laughs> we got all four, right? Perfect. <laughs> yes, even celebrations can get a little challenging when it's below zero. But what a way to wrap up what has been one of our most memorable trips to the Ely, Minnesota area. Midwinter in the North Country is no time to shut out the outdoors. The opportunities for adventure are around every corner. And it's a big part of what makes life special here in our Northland outdoors.